So I'm Ninja Online guys, welcome back to Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, this is chapter 79, if you can believe it. Um, when we last left off we were doing some out of animus stuff, and uh, we just have to finish collecting all of the sticky notes, hacking all the computers, there's still one more server and one more cams room by the looks of things, but yeah, we're not doing too too bad. I'm gonna head upstairs, <coughs> we're gonna do floor 17, 15, whatever it is. First, and then we'll, uh, um, floor 15. Then we'll go on from there. Reason being is just because there's only a couple things up here, so I might as well go up here, do that right now, get it done with, and then just go back downstairs and, you know, fly through that room. Hopefully, anyways. That's the plan. Alright, let's see if I'm uh, any wiser right now with my puzzles. Looks like we're starting off with Frogger right now. A classic. Almost thought I was screwed. But first try, every try. Nah, I'm kidding. But <laughs> that was actually pretty good. over there so I don't see it on screen. Hey look it's a f uh, poster. Olivier Bonin. And like usual you guys can pause and read it. I'm just gonna scan it as I give you guys time to do so. This is straight up like a legit chapter from a book. And I, I know it is because it said chapter 3 at the, the top, but like, it's the amount of text I mean. Interesting. We're at 13 of 33 computers. Looks like a little bit more had opened up when we came up here. Let's grab the uh, note in the office first. Then I don't have to come back in here after. What do we got here? Sticky note 19. So we have a sticky note over this way. Uh, I'm going to check the cams, just in case there's more footage. Is there anything that way? Nope. There's a server there, too. <clears throat> Sticky Note 9. Seventy-two oh three. Well, we're gonna need some big numbers for this one. Forty-nine. That might be too much. So 
Just, just the right amount. <clears throat> For some frogger, huh? I was actually trying to move upwards and my analog stick was having none of it. <clears throat> This one on the right only has that one, uh, or the one on the right. They're all on the right. This one after that, like this one I'm on right now, only has that one opening. Which means timing is everything there. This might be bad for me. Ooh. Nice. Look at that, Tatham. I'm assuming, anyways. Yep. Uh, this room, I think. Yes. Sorry to sneeze. Nothing to see here, though. No extra footage. I believe we're done up here, then. Looks like it. Alright, back to floor... Whatever. Three, I think it is. Five, something like that. Well, I guess it would be floor... Theoretically, it should be floor two. Pretty sure it's floor two. Finish off the collection spree here, solve some puzzles, get some knowledge, you know how it is. Allergies are just like, hi, let me be in the video too. Sticky note 17. They're giving me the easy ones today, huh? <clears throat> Alright, <sighs> pretty damn close. But we made it. Our initial reports gave us hope that Enzio Auditori would serve as an ideal candidate for future Abstergo projects. His charisma, sexual magnetism, and wry humor gave him all the qualities of a leading man. However, his corruption by the Assassin Order robbed him of these qualities as he fell deeper and deeper into a spiral of revenge. Enzio was frequently known to articulate a passive acceptance of evil. He was also a man of ugly contradictions, one who preached free thought, yet traveled well beyond his home country to proselytize his corrupted creed, just as he's doing here with this impressionable Chinese girl. Notice, too, that in his gestures and bearing, there is still something of the old lecher in him. Enzio's entire personality is built around pure demagoguery, claiming his philosophy is about love when violence and coercion are his primary means of tackling problems. We have therefore come to the conclusion that Enzio Auditori da Firenze would be a risky character to develop. I swear to God he was saying Enzio, not Ezio. But I really hope uh, <clears throat> when I play uh, Assassin's Creed Chronicle China that I see Ezio. It would be cool. So we're almost halfway through uh, the hacks. Of course, this guy's thing is like all the way on the other side. Is there anything this way? Sure there is. Tons of stuff. Let's go this way.
fucking voice. It's being all blah right now. My timing. Oh my god. I didn't think my timing was that off on. Okay, that. It's me not focusing. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's like clear my throat. What do we got here? Some nice pictures, huh? It's Sean. Desmond. Memories from uh, Desmond. No, it's recovered media, so it's just pictures, like I said. Oh, it's a kitty cat. I was almost fucked there. Okay. Almost fucked there too. We made it. Okay, uh, this is on. I don't think I've ever used this phone more than a few times to record anything. Uh, hey, Dad. So, uh, we're all here in New York at the motel. It's, uh, Queens, actually. In Astoria, near the NQ. Uh, Rebecca's off getting batteries for something. Sean's in his room doing whatever Sean does. And, uh, you're out getting some food. Me? Well, I'm supposed to be getting ready to break into some offices in the financial district. Feels just like prepping for one of your old training drills, actually. Ten years go by, and then you show up, and it's like... Uh, like I, I was never gone, and we're right back to the ball-busting and the conspiracies and the paranoia. Only this time, I believe you. I believe every word. You know, I don't even think you know the half of it. I, I don't think you know how much I've seen, how much I've, I've learned just a few weeks. Everything, really. I feel like, uh, like I've, I've lived a thousand years, or, or, or ten thousand, maybe. It's impossible to explain. But when you see that much of the world through the eyes of so many, you can't help but be sad. And to see all these incredible, intelligent people fight the same battles, make the same mistakes over and over again. Because culture and knowledge and, and history, these things, they aren't passed on through our genes. Every kid on Earth needs to relearn the basics. How to live. How to survive. How to stand up for, for what's right. So much is lost in the transfer. So much is added to every generation. It's a shame. I mean, over... Over everything must be learned again. I met Clay, Dad. Clay Gesmeric, in the Animus. I knew him by his Abstergo handle, Subject 16. My, uh, my predecessor. And he showed me things. He passed them to me. Just before he died. Or got deleted or Everything he'd learned, everything he'd seen. Uh, God, how do I talk about this? So, um, I guess you, you trained him. Huh? After I left, he really looked up to you, and now that I've seen through his eyes, I, I think I understand why. 
glad you had him around, even if I wasn't there. The things he showed me. Unbelievable things. And I never... Although their memos are long, the audio memos, they're kind of cool. I appreciate them. So that's half the computer's hack now. Sticky note three. Where are we with the sticky notes? Oh, we're way over half now. <laughs> I meant to say well over, but it's fine. Way over works too. Alright. Uh, Elia Ghost Lights. Bermuda Triangle. The Chicken... Sorry, the Chicken Atza. <coughs> I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not sure. Chichen Atza. Easter Island. Lake for stock. All right. The next server. 2058. I don't need to go that big then. That can't be five there. I was wrong. All right, about hacking. was a tight uh tight cross to make and I just didn't make it. Nice. Second try I'll take it. Our initial research into the life of Ratana Gaiden focused on a period spanning his late teens to his early thirties. But our researchers came away unimpressed by his calm and stoic demeanor, with occasional flashes of extreme anger. This was not the sort of leading man we felt comfortable endorsing. We decided, therefore, to delve into his early childhood, with the hope that scenes of pre-colonial America might hold some appeal. 
As you can see here, there is a certain naive charm and innocence to this young boy. Unfortunately, our researchers found this young man's story deeply problematic as well. For one, the omnipresence of the Mohawk culture lacks the balance necessary to tell the true story of America. And secondly, the Mohawk language would certainly be an issue for most of our audience. We therefore feel that although Ratana Tankon's early life would be of some interest to our more educated viewers, it's unlikely that his story would appeal on a broader scale, being too foreign, as it were, to normal audiences. Our team recommends we pass on this property. Hmm. All right. I believe we're done on this part of the map here. Yeah. Just need to hit that next room. I'm there and I'm trying to get down to that. Eh? Okay. Left. Down. Left. Have to go up. Left, down, left, up. Left, down, left, up. <sighs> I'm too good. Nah, I just got lucky there. Don't even. Not even gonna sugarcoat it. Hey, we know him. Well, some of us do if we've played, uh, you know, the Ezio trilogy. All right, next workstation. Down, go down there. So that'd be bad. What about up? Left. Down. So up. Left. Down. I'm getting extremely lucky, I promise, guys. <laughs> the difference about me playing at 12 in the morning and 2 in the afternoon. Hey, Dad. Uh, you know, it's, uh... It's funny, I, I have this memory of you, uh, when I keep coming back to, and I, I always think about it when I'm working, or just before going to bed, uh, because it, um, sort of calms me, I guess, um, I was 14, I think, and, um, and, and you were trying to teach me how to, to walk with a light step, remember that? How to be mindful of how much noise I made when I moved around. Simple stuff. Stuff I understand now, but back then, I, uh, gotta tell you, I thought you were just being <laughs> an asshole. Uh, so, uh, you told me you were gonna go up to your room and sit with your back to the door and read a book. And you wanted me to wait at least 15 minutes and then sneak up there and tap you on the shoulder without you knowing. I, I even remember the book you were reading at the time, the one by, uh, Captain Johnson. And you warned me that if you caught me, we'd have to start all over. Then you went upstairs. And I waited. I waited, and I waited, and I waited. I waited four hours before deciding to go up. And even then, it took me 20 minutes to get to the foot of the stairs. And uh, another 30 to get up them. And then 10 to get down the hall. And there I was at the door, and peeked into your room and I was I was so hoping that you'd be asleep but no no you you were still reading and I just about shit myself but ten minutes later I was just five feet away from you and that's when I remember setting my foot down and you flinched ever so slightly you Flinched. I thought maybe I'd imagined it, but I knew you'd hurt me. You didn't say anything. You just checked your watch, you reached for your drink, you took a sip, and then you kept reading. But I knew 
I failed. You didn't say anything. I, I, I didn't understand why. And I lunged and tapped you on the shoulder, and you turned around, and, oh, fantastic, you said, and you scooped me up, and you gave me a big hug, and I didn't say anything. But, Dad, Dad, I was so pissed off. I wanted to scream at you. I, I failed, and you knew it, but you said nothing. And I stayed mad for weeks. I thought you were, you, you were patronizing me. But maybe you decided right there that I was never going to be the man you wanted me to be. But I realized just a few years ago that you checking your watch... That was the clue, wasn't it? You let me win because I had been so patient. And I guess that impressed you. You know, maybe at that moment you thought it might be better to be my dad instead of my mentor. I, I don't really know. Maybe for you, they're, they're one and the same. You know, either way, I'm happy to know that both my mentor and my dad out for me that day. I didn't understand that then. I think I do now. Well, we're already up 21 computers hacked. Jesus. I mean, I did just hit 17, but... <laughs> Sticky note 12. Now I have the hiccups. Alright, I think I'm done in this room. I am. So. I'll clear out the main room, the cams room, the side room, and we'll end with that room. That's enough to trigger a bleeding effect, man. Start with this guy's computer. Or workstation, rather. Alright. This one has the wormholes. <clears throat> if I went up and left, down, left. Up, left, down, left. <sighs> I swear to God. Got a third eye on this shit right now. Believe that. Woo! Too nice with it. The hell is that? Anti Kathera mechanism? Baghdad battery? Blood vials. Mitochondrial Eve. Oh, fuck. That takes me back to Parasite Eve days. Crystal skulls. Memory seals. Or niche manuscript. Roger Bacon. Another one with these tellies. Uh, does that actually help me get anywhere? Yes, I want to go down on that one. That sounded horrible. Uh, up. No, sorry, left, up, right, down. That one was just easy to solve. 